and welcome to lesson 5 of Haskell for Dummies. This is a direct follow-up of lesson 4 where we were looking at equality between types um, but obviously it will go into that now. You know I quickly jumped into instances um, this is you'll get a type error so we've got for example our data type mood okay so we'll refresh that and then we'll do um, let's have a look so blah and Woot is greater than Woot and blah. Okay, but it's saying, well, uh, I don't have an instance of ORD with the data type mood. Okay, so it's, just, it's saying, well, I, I, I can't tell you which one's great or not great because you've not told me or, ex or used something called an instance to declare that. But we'll go into instances later. Uh, and then you get another error. So if you're going to try and uh, check the equality of different values, i.e. is Julie equal to an 8? So is a string equal to an integer? Well, obviously no, because we haven't, you know, we haven't created anything that tells us how to, ha how to handle strings and integers together. That's going to return an error. We've checked out the balls. And then, you know, because this returns a bool, so is x equal to 5? That's true. What's the opposite of true is false. Okay. Is x greater than 7? That's false because 5 is not greater than 7 and the not of that is true. Okay. So another one is double ampersand is an infix operator for Boolean conjunction. So if you already know that, I mean, it's pretty similar in lots of different languages. Um, you know, so we're going to do true and true is true. But anytime you use false, whoops, is false. Is false. Okay, so it's only ever true when there's two trues. Otherwise, if it's false, well, actually, we didn't do the last one. <laughs> Let's double check. And that equals false. In case you can see, the only time that returns true is if both values on either side are true. This is the infix operator for or. So we can use this example. Let's see if that works. So 8 is greater than 4. So that's true. 4 is not great. So it's true, false. And that returns as true. So let's try that again and do this true true is true so any of them let's 8 and 10 6 and 10 false false is false so much like you have to have two trues here for it to be a true otherwise everything else is false this one's the other way around uh, everything is true if you have a true until you have two falses and then it returns a false we'll show an example so false or false that can returns false true or false that returns true false or true that returns true okay so you see it only returns false uh, oh, one more true and true okay that returns true so every time you have a true on either side it's always going to return true unless you've got two falses and then here, it's always going to return false unless you've got two trues. This is like that in most languages. Um, so that explains it. And this not. So it takes the results of those two and then flips it. Oh, actually, we'll do this quickly. So not true and true. What's the error here? Let's have a little look. What do you think is happening here? That's incorrect. Okay. So true isn't that. We're checking against two types. It has to be uppercase. Oh. So we'll change that to uppercase. And false. There we go. That's the error there. What is wrong with this? Not x equals 6. Well, it's saying maybe you should use a let in there. So it's kind of saying, well... 
no, you've, you're creating a function in there. Well, it needs to be double equal, doesn't it? That's what we need to check. X is equal to six, but then we're not even giving it an X. So, yeah, so we'd have to give it an X. Let's try, let's try it with something else. Um, o equals five, okay, and then not, Oops, O is equal to 6. There we go. Okay, so before it didn't have, uh, it had a single equal, but it needed a double equal. And then it kind of like threw the first error saying, well, why have you got an equal? Because you're trying to make a function here. Um, you know, you, do you want to use a, 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 a let? Uh, do blocks, again, we'll explain that in the future. Uh, well, we did a little bit explain, you know, it runs things in order, but it, it's, it's, it's a little bit more than that. Um, so it's saying, well, why don't you use let x5, you know, something like that, because this should be a function. But if we use double equal, then that's fine. And then we'd already set x to something else. We created a zero, uh, an o, add it to 5, and then that returns true. Let's check this one. So 1 times 2 is greater than 5. False. There's nothing wrong with it. Superb. What about this one? What do you think is wrong with this one? Merry. So a list of Merry with a capital and a list of Happy with a capital H. Capital M, capital H. Where it's saying, I don't have a date constructor of Merry or Happy. Okay, so it's saying, I don't have either of these in scope. So I'm thinking. They're meant to be strings. There we go. So Mary is greater than happy because M's obviously after H. Let's see if we've got a trickier one. Oh, what's wrong with this one? Well, we're not in JavaScript land, so we can't add integers with strings. Okay, so this is a list of integers and this is a list of chars, and it will conflict. Sometimes, I mean, the error messages can be a little bit confusing. You don't necessarily see that in there, because I kind of realise that something is, is not matching it, you know, in this aspect. It's saying, well, I don't have an instance of num char. We check num's type class where int lives inside, and we don't have a char for that. So it's just like, well, yeah, you're not, because that's not one of its children. Int is one of its children, but char isn't. And we don't have a way to handle this plus plus. Because plus plus will either handle it when everything is a list of, of ints or it's a list of chars. Them together or them together, but not two different types together. Oh, you can do the if then else. Um, so we can demonstrate that. Let's have a look. Truth in, false in. <laughs> okay, so TF, let's have a little look. Truth in, F equals false in. Okay. So, if true, then T, else F. What do you reckon that's going to output? Truth in, because obviously you're saying, well, if something is true or false, then do one thing otherwise. So if this is true, do that part. If this is false, do that part. So the way to get to the second part, to the F, would be to do false, like so, false in. Okay, so it's returning us an F, which our F is false in. But you can do it like this also, so if, one is greater than three, then t else f false in. Okay, now we can make a little function actually. Let's try and make a little function just to do this. So is greater than five takes an int returns a ball. 
greater than 5a. Okay, so if a is greater than 5, then, so then it's true, else it's false. Okay, let's try that out. So is, whoops, is greater than 5. Is 3 greater than 5? Nope. Is 4 greater than 5? False. Is 5 greater than 5? False. Is 6 greater than 5? True. Okay, for the first three times we called it, so 3, 4, and 5, it did its check. So it's 8. So it was like, is this true or false? So it's true. Okay, return true. True, return true. And then when it hit false, obviously 6. Is 6 greater than 5? No, it's not. Then it ignored that case and it went on to here, so else. Okay, this is again very similar in a lot of languages. Yeah, and that sort of demonstrates what I just did, but a little bit differently. And this example shows you that the condition has to return a bool. Okay, so this can only be true or false. So x times 100, so 0 times 100 is going to equal 0. Yeah, so look, if we do 0 times 100, that's just going to return us 0. That's not giving us a ball. But if we were to do something like 1 is greater than 100, then that's going to be a false. That returns us a ball. Okay? So if, again, if we do the type of asterisk, it returns us a num of a. Okay? So anything in a type class of num, which is not a bool. But then if we check the type of greater than, then that's an odd and odd, and then it returns us a bool. Okay, so these if else only works with that value returning us a bool. And that's just giving you another example. So let's just go through this quickly. So greet if cool. Coolness is a string that you're going to pass to it. So if cool, so you're like, well, where's cool? Okay, so we're looking at where clause. So is coolness equals to down? <laughs> is coolness equals to downright frosty? Yo, um, well then, if that becomes true, you know, if you pass it a string of downright frosty yo, then it'll print a string line of a hey, what you chicken something like that, <laughs> and otherwise. It'll return push or psh. Okay. Let's explain this one. So this is a little bit to do with encapsulation. So we're passing it a string and we've called it coolness. Okay. Um, and then we've got an internal function called cool and that expects a value. We've So we pass in a value of coolness, but that value is V now. So we've changed its naming. And is V equals to downright frosty frosty yo? So we're saying, okay, we're past cool coolness. Okay, straight from there. And then like that in the where clause will get it. So another example of that. Okay. Let's just quickly um, here we go. Let's put that back to where things should be. Okay. Right, so you're thinking, well, okay, well, I could grab coolness, you know, prior to that, I could just grab from there. But let's do this. Let not call equals I'm not cool. Okay. Remember, we have to use the in keyword. So now we can, you know, we can then go and use this part. We'll indent it a little bit like this. Okay, let in. So let not call if call coolness. Okay, so what we'll do, actually, we'll change this and we'll do this because this is what we used previously. There we go. Let's have a look. If we, because not cool is kind of scoped to within here. Or actually, I'll be a bit more specific. Within here, the function. So if I try and call it from here, 
error, okay? So not calls, not in scope. So you're thinking, well, how can I pass it along? And this is where we're then, we can grab not call, pass it along, okay? That then becomes our V value. So if we were to do this, so we can be a little bit more explicit. Cool. Sometimes if I can't work out what the type is, I do something like this. I give it a type that I know it's not going to be. Okay. And then what that says, well, actually, I expected it to be a char to bool, but you're saying it should be an int. Boom. There you go. And that gives you exactly what it is. And a char to bool, you know, is, sorry, a list of char to bool is actually string. Uh, so this will never equal because we're always adding whatever we give it, I'm not cool. So you're always going to get psh, in this instance. Let's try it. Let's refresh that. Let's get um, greeting if cool. And let's try, yeah. Psh, and if even if I try, you know, greet if cool and we'll give it that one. It's also going to go psh, like that. But then if we just pass it coolness, then this gets ignored, which is what this is telling us here. Um, reload that. Downright fussy yo, and we get, hey, what's shaking? There you go. So that's what's happening there. Okay, so I think we'll stop there because we're getting onto tuples and there's still quite a lot more to go on. Um, what we'll let's double check what we've done. So we kind of checked what data types were and constructors of a data type. We checked things like equality. We made a function that we pass it, you know, one constructor return another. So it's much like the not. Uh, we checked things with fractionals and ints. We checked equality and then ordering, and then we kind of touched a little bit upon instances. We looked more at types, why things can match and can't match. Uh, then we did if then else. And here we kind of like put things uh, a bit together from previous, you know, let in and then where. And then we sort of worked out what the scope was and, and the inputs. Another nice way to work out what your type is, I should have actually, you can have underscore or do exactly the same thing. So it's expecting, um, you know, I found a wild card standing in for char and ball. So we can get those guys. Oh, bring it back. And that's that. Again, that string. But yeah, and that's that. So thank you very much for joining us and look forward to seeing lesson five.